Hello and welcome to this 20 minute long video on cylinders. Orthographics are starting points. So we're going to start off with some rectangles. Rectangles appear to have a line through the centre. Now that line will become very important as we go through this work because it represents a centre line. A line through the middle of the object. Much like a candle has a wick through the centre. That's the official representation of a centre line. It's a long dash with a short one just after it. And it would sit through the middle. Cylinders are a starting point, but there are many other types of what we call solids of revolution. The similarity to a candle could be thought of for this little drawing down below. A bit like a tea light or a small a candle with a wick in the centre, a little lead down the centre of a pencil. Same sort of idea. Now, we've got two different setups here. We've got the same rectangle, but we've put the centre line in different positions. On the left hand side, we've drawn a candle, we're going to draw a print stick type idea. But on the right hand side, by changing that, check the spelling, it says puck as an ice hockey puck. By producing an ellipse at the top, the full width, and a thicker, fuller ellipse at the bottom, we're going to get the idea of a cylinder. And on the right hand one, you can see how those are being turned. The top of the two uh, ellipses is thinner, the bottom one is more rounded. So the centre line gives us a big hint as to which way or which way it's orientated. That centre line that's getting drawn there again is exceedingly important. We can move on to much more complex things. Don't panic, you're not drawing this just yet. But we can move on to much more complex things. This, for example, could be some sort of lantern or strange looking thing that's made out of sloping sides and parallel sides. Sloping sides we can think of as cones and parallel sides as cylinders. So by putting these ellipse type ideas, each one lower down getting wide, fuller, top to bottom, same width, same width, gives us an idea of the bottom. And if I just form quickly an outline right about that, you get an idea how that 2D drawing, straight from a profile, that's a 2D drawing, has instantly given us the construction, if you like, by using ellipses to produce a 3D representation of the same object. Now, 3D objects are thought in this to be quite complicated to do, but if you know where the centre line is, and we can get a little bit of practice on this ellipse technique, we can produce fairly complex things relatively easy. But you must know where the centre line and which direction it's going. Okay, remember the difference between a print stick and a puck. In terms of a 2D view, they look very similar. But in one, it's revolving up and down the way, vertically. The other one, it's in this case, is revolving horizontally. So we must know where the, the not the wick, where the centre is for each one of these. But just think of the centre line and the wick. It's more or less the same thing. Now, centre lines cannot be seen. Centre lines are a graphic representation that help us understand two-dimensional drawings. Let's look at something else now. Now, this is fairly complex. It lasts for about 17 to 20 minutes. By all means, stop, rewind, pause, or just eject at any point. But I'm just going to start building up more complex shapes. There's a, a triangle centre line down the middle, and it looks like a triangle thing at the bottom. You may or may not recognise that as a sort of, I don't know, cocktail glass type type shape. I've got some lines going on the inside because the last time I looked glasses were hollow. So although I'm drawing the outside of the, the, the glass of the goblet there, there's some detail on the inside and we may have to come across this type of line later on. It's funnily enough it's called hidden detail because it is detail inside the object that's hidden and we can't see. So we have a different way of representing that on a drawing. What we'd use are dashed lines. Centre lines, long dash, short dash, Hidden detail lines, short dashes. So there's two new sets of lines on that two-dimensional object. Centre line and hidden detail. Now what would that look like in 3D? So the idea of this is primarily that's an orthographic view, that's fine. But let's just try and take it to the third dimension. What would it look like if it was spun round? If we were to revolve that shape around that centre line and think of it as a three-dimensional object. So centre line, hidden detail, We've got um, the 3D option now is to put those ellipses in. There's one being sketched in for the top. There's ones for those little bits lower down. And each one, although it's different diameter, is thicker top to bottom. It's fuller. It's more rounded. So if you can see from that, even at that stage, we've got even the inside line, which I'm trying to hide, highlight here in a pencil sketch. It's not the clearest thing to see. I did it with another ellipse. So straight away, our 2D drawing has actually given us a fairly good starting point for putting together a 3D external, I'm not going to show insides at the moment, 
Um, we've not put any hidden detail in a 3D drawing just yet, but I think you can see there how that would suggest there's a hollow object there. A little bit of shading would make it look a bit more three-dimensional. Let's try something else now. Same idea. We're going to start with the center line. We've got the lines either side. We have a little bit of a flaring out at the bottom. This could be a jug or a, a container of some sort. There's the top ellipse. Bottom ellipse, same width, but fuller top to bottom. The lower one, wider, because it is wider, and fuller again. So if I firm those in in a minute, you get the idea. Now, on the right-hand side, imagine flipping a coin. The higher up it goes, the flatter it goes. The lower down it goes, the more you see of the top edge of that coin. So you can see as this one has been sketched in and firmed round, how eventually we could end up with something that's almost round at the bottom. And that's the idea of high ellipses being flatter, lower ellipses, curves being fuller or more rounded. There's a cylinder, there's a little base in the bottom. I'll just try and make a little cylinder, sorry, an ellipse on the top to give an idea of a hollow space. Not the easiest of things to sketch, it will take a bit of practice, but with practice, the idea of ellipses, a little bit like if you could slow motion the flipping of a coin, putting your thumb, flick it in the air, and watch it rotate quickly. There, one P in flipping, I think. Um, there's the idea of looking at a cylindrical object or a flat disc from different angles. In fact, those ones on the right-hand side, I could almost join some of those cylinders, those ellipses together, to get a series of thicker, chunkier cylinders, one hanging above the other. So, oh no, what about car wheels? Or objects that are not going straight up and down the way? Because in each of these cases, the centre line has been vertical. You put a car wheel, then the cylinders are lying at an angle if it's turning. So let's just try and put some centre lines down here. It's a variety of different angles. And I'm going to try and draw a rectangle at right angles to these, so you can see our line going across at right angles. We're building up the, the rectangle again, much as we did in the earlier ones, just by turning the page, we're getting this idea of uh, centre lines, then a square, sorry, a rectangle, and then we're going to try and build up the ellipses again. Centre lines, fairly obvious when I highlight, highlight them with the arrows there. So let's keep going with these rectangles. I think I'll stick with rectangles, but the, 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 occasionally I might end up with something a little bit off off the square. So remember the idea of a, of a wick as a centre line. We can get some thinner can sorry cylinders. We have some wider, chunkier cylinders. We can have some chunky long ones, and we might even have a slightly misshapen oh no misshapen one at the end there. So it's the same idea. It's the same rules for that ellipse. The one nearest us will be smaller, the one furthest away. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in a minute or two. So this time it's the same as last time, but the nearest one will be smaller, and it was not quite so chunky, and the one furthest away will be chunkier. So let's see, once I get these very slow written notes along the bottom here, which one will we choose? I think I'm going to start um, with that middle one. I'm going to try and put an ellipse on the front, 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 even that wee one whatever's going on there. And the ones at the back now will be the same width, but rounder, fuller, chunkier. I'm trying to be PC in my terminology, but they're not quite as squashed. Not quite a circle, but certainly fuller than the ellipses at the front. So this time, if you look at the front ones, we're going to draw the same sort of ellipse, but chunkier at the back edge. So up and there we go. And again, you can see how rough some of these sketches are. It takes a fair bit of practice and definitely tell what's going on with that last one. I'm confused by that. Well, let's just go with it anyway. So if we take these, uh, firming these in, I think I'll go for the front ones first. Um, now, I'm doing this on a, an iPad uh, rather than showing you sheets of paper. Um, it's probably easier to show you this method, but if it was in school, you'd see this done on paper. In fact, I might link this to another video which shows a paper version of the, exactly the same set of skills. So, firming in the outline, we were going to see the, the, the near ellipse. We're not going to see all of the far away ellipse. So you can see as I'm sketching these in, and it does help a bit, the software tidies them up a little bit. I've got them all going at different angles. Oops. Now we're going to, that one was definitely not quite right. I'm going to sort that one out a little bit. It was a little bit twisted. That's a bit better. 
Now this line's coming away from those ellipses towards, well, they're going in the same direction, if you like, as the centre line. And you can see they're all going more or less parallel to the centre lines they drew right at the beginning of this sketch, except for that one there, which I'll do within a minute. So, and then the back ellipse, I only see the top half. The back half's going to be hidden around the back. What's happening with that right hand? Ah, it's a cone. It's a cone that's been cut the tip of it. Oh, that's quite cool. If I had a bit of shade or tone or colour to these to get the idea of it being a solid object, um, just give me a minute. I'm just going to use a little bit of airbrush tool here this now and spray over uh, the object. I'll have to do a little bit of rubbing off with this particular technique. Um, the, again, the airbrush strokes are going, if you like, in the same direction as the centre line, except for that cone one, with the darker right-hand side, darker right-hand side, lighter left-hand side. Maybe a wee bit of white left on it, but you can see it's building up. The only one that's slightly different is the cone, and it tends to uh, travel towards the tip, or where the tip would be. So once I get these uh, areas of, in this case, a sort of mustard yellow, uh, I'll just get a little bit of a clean up around the outside this, and try and get rid of the excess overspray with this uh, airbrush technique. Um, that's then tidying up a little bit now. Oops, a little bit tidying up now. I'm just get rid of those background. There we go. And the front ellipse will need a wee touch of uh, colour on it as well. And that's done much faster than it actually happened on the on the tablet itself. Those front panels then, I'll need a little bit of colour. Uh, maybe just touch them in or maybe just do it by hand. But I think from there, you're getting the idea of cylinders. And a little, a little bit like a car wheels, these are definitely rolling around in front of us. So the rule again, if you imagine yourself looking at a can of any soft can beverage if you like, soft drink. There's our centre lines going in the direction I drew them initially. They do look a little bit like wick sticking out the end of the... And remember, that's the proper designation of a centre line. Long line, short line, long line, short line. Or long dash, short dash, with gaps in between. Going back to that can idea, if you have a can in your hand at, say, chest level, and you're looking down towards it, the top of the can, the thing nearest to you, is the thing you'll see fully, so you won't see the underside of the can, you will see the top of that little can that's appearing in the hand there, the snout. Looking down on that, you're going to see an ellipse, and the bottom half, you, because you're looking steeper at it, you're looking down at it more, the same cylinder, the same width of the cylinder, will look like it's got a rounder, fuller, bigger base. Okay, so near is thin, far is a thicker oval, let's just put it that way. So a chunkier oval, let's make it as PC as we can. So again, look at the ones in front. These are the cans as if they were lying on the ground now, on a table in front of you. The one nearest to you, okay, in this case the dark ones, are narrower and the ones furthest away are rounded. So as it says here this now. I can write faster than this, but I'm just going to let it run slowly through. They do look like some cylinders rolling along. Uh, I don't know how that cone would quite manage in that direction. I think that might spin in the opposite direction. But they definitely look um, a little bit more realistic than certainly some examples of drawings I've seen in other places. Now, towards the end of this video, I've got some work, not mine, by a country mile. Um, it's actually by one of the Dutch industrial design sketch uh, guys uh, of some, cylind uh, some cylinders in the form of uh, telescopes. I'll put that on at the end to see what it looks like if you get the hang of this because it is, it's a simple little technique once you master it. Um, so we're saying the near side is oval, the far side is a chunkier oval. Okay, but remember you won't see that. If it's a solid object, if it's glass, you might see something different. Okay, again, you can stop there. You don't have to watch the rest of this video. We're a good good uh, distance in, 14 minutes in or so. If you want to practice the first set of cylinders and complicated shapes, have a go at that. If you fancy you get the hang of that, try these ones at an angle. What I'm going to do at the end is rush through an example of one, uh, I think, on a vehicle. And that will uh, rapidly build up the same sort of idea of a um, three-dimensional object. In this case, I'm going to build it up using the vanishing points off the page. I've got a cuboid there, that's going to be the, the carcass of the, the vehicle. I'm going to put the wheels roughly in those positions. And those red lines, yep, that's the centre lines. They're going towards the, 
the vanishing point on the left. I'm then going to have to put some lines at right angles to them to get an idea of the width of the, that's the other red line. And then I'm going to have to build up a, a, a rectangle within which the wheel is going to sit. Now it's a bit confusing, but if I put the first ellipse in there in a different colour, and then the back ellipse, slightly chunkier looking, if you notice again, there might be another wheel just a bit visible over there, so I'm going to build up another ellipse, double ellipse. They're getting slightly chunkier, not bigger necessarily, but chunkier. And the ones I'm sketching at the top now, that's what happens when people get it wrong. Uh, nothing against maths teachers, but their cylinders do look a bit wonky, I have to say. It's a different sketching technique. They're using something called oblique drawing. So what I'm going to do this now is going to build up those uh, ellipses to get an idea of at least three of the wheels. The far away wheel I'll not see. Uh, the ones towards the back appear smaller just because things further away appear to get smaller. If I join them up front and back, there's obviously be quite a few lines there that I won't see um, as I've firmed on everything, but digitally I can maybe remove some of those back curves just so we see the cylinder idea. And that's it. There's a vehicle. If I put another couple of ellipses in there for tyres uh, and rims, if that's something you wanted to do. That's as far as I wanted to go because I was bored and telly wasn't really ha working for me that night. So it was a case of very quickly build up a big wedge, put a bumper on it, maybe put some sort of um, driver's area, maybe put some sides on it. Uh, it's it's going to be fast, so it's going to have to be red, obviously. Uh, I don't know if I'm doing a road car, I don't know if I'm doing a Formula 1, Formula E type vehicle. Well, it's got the... It's got the wrap round uh, cockpit on it and put some profiles, backs, wings, headlights. Oh, we're going daft now. That's it. It's, there's no point in trying to follow it. You get the general idea. Look at the wheels. That's the same technique as we started off doing 17 minutes ago and building up cylinders. The only difference is these ones are lying on their side, going towards the left rather than vertical. It's exactly the same technique. Have a go at cylinders, have a look and see what you can do, and at the end of this, as promised, I will put on that pretty cool one when it comes to this, the telescopes. Just running back through what we did then, remember? So there's the uh, centre lines, the basics of the rectangle, small ellipse in the top, big ellipse in the bottom. Where the centre line points is really, really important. For vertical ones on the left, horizontal ones on the right, and things at angles, we start off every time with the centre line. Look at the head, look at the can, look at the top, look at the bottom. And then have a look at what somebody does when they get the hang of this. These are some fantastic drawings of telescopes basically using cylinders. So go on, have a go, let me know how you get on.